Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News, changing the conversation now, talking about the rule of law and the disposition of government that has been on the front burner. The court cases of Shore, Sambo, Dasuki and the excesses of the DSS readily comes to mind. Indeed, the federal government led by President Muhammad Buhari has been accused of serially disobeying court orders and having no regard for the rule of law. And as a symbolic protest against what it describes as an emerging autocracy and military-style oppression, a national newspaper in Nigeria, Punch, last week took a stand to henceforth address the democratically elected president by his military rank, Major General Muhammad Buhari retired. In this interview, we ask, has the rule of law suffered under the current administration, and how can we deepen democratic values? So joining us now from our Rise Abuja studio is former presidential candidate, uh, Mohamed Shitu. Welcome to the show, uh, Alaji. Good morning. Good, good morning. Good morning to my, you, all of you there. All right. Uh, like, like we said in that introduction, would, would you say that uh, the rule of law has suffered in this dispensation, or it has not suffered in your words? Uh, for us, uh, when you talk of rule of law, uh, it's sacrosanct. Uh, first of all, uh, in our uh, system, which is a presidential system of government, you have, what you are, you have uh, uh, three arms of government, where you have uh, the, and you talk of separation of power, and you also within these three arms of government. So when you are talking of uh, breaking of the rule of law, uh, why I say sacrosanct, it, it is how we see it or you see it. Uh, first of all, uh, we all uh, were in forefront to see that we achieved the democratic uh, space that we are enjoying today. And uh, uh, we look, even the story we are talking about, it was in forefront fighting for the democratic uh, norms. And today, uh, 20 years to this democratic uh, norm that we have, we are, it is time as Nigerian to now, if, we are look, if there's anything that we see that uh, as a people uh, we don't want in the constitution that uh, give us this process, uh, we call on National Assembly to say, look, National Assembly, we have section A, so, 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 section so, 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 to be expunged or to be amended or to be doing this. This is where I'm, I want to urge Sowore and Co and my colleagues polit in politics to look at and look at how we can get together, put constitutional amendment and send to National Assembly. Because if you hit the system, we, we, we call for this, that we want democracy. But when we're calling for this democratic process, we, we also hurriedly run into it because military call, we didn't sit down as people to look at how do we fashion our democratic process according to our culture and belief. So opportunity has come now. National Assembly are saying by the next year, January, they will start uh, a, a constitutional amendment. So we have got opportunity to now entrench this democratic process that we are in. Instead of us running into the street, run down democratic process, and then do we still want military to come back or how do we want to entrench the democratic process? The only way to entrench the democratic process is for us to now sort the National Assembly to amend the Constitution. Uh, I, I want you to be a bit more specific. And if you were to make an assessment on the scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the highest and 1 being the lowest, how would you rate democracy and the rule of law under President Muhammadu Buhari's administration so far? Under President uh, Muhammad Buhari, we have seen that when even in the uh, just about last year towards the election, where DSS Director General was sacked, it has never happened for just going to uh, National Assembly. We have seen a lot of uh, things that has happened. We have seen that, look, even uh, where uh, 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 judge, uh, judges are free in this step. You see that uh, oppositions get more judgment from the court than even the, the ruling party. We can see that there are a lot, you see, when you are measuring uh, issue of uh, 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 governance, democratic, democracy, and rule of law, 
you look at you, it's not just one way uh, uh, straight jacket. You also look at the tenants. You look at uh, the doctrines. Is the doctrine practice? Is there separation of power in the government? Is there uh, 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 um, look? If you look at president uh, uh, at the the, the 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 separation of power and uh, in consonance with the rule of law, you find that you have judiciary that are, 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 are more free than before. Today, you have legislators that have uh, they take out their, and you have the executives that are minding their business. And you, we, for us, we believe that uh, you don't achieve democratic process 100% uh, in just 20 years of democracy. The countries that we are following, which is US and Britain, US have come from 1716 to now. We are talking of almost two, 300 years ago. And still, you can see imperfection. Today, U.S. are talking of impeaching their president for misconduct in some areas. Now, in Nigeria, we are just 20 years in nurturing this, our democratic process. Mine is to say, yes, this man has come. When he came in, 20, in, in 2015, Nigerian believed that he's coming with autocratic rule. But at the end of the day, Nigerians were even saying, ah, this man has become vegetable that even he, he could not. So we, we have seen that this man has called nothing, at least 60, 70%, he has tried his best to see that he adhere strictly to the tenet of democratic uh, process and rule of law. You have spoken about the separation of powers and the executive arm of the government is one that has been attacked for subduing the other arms of government. Case in point, um, Shawore, the Shawore case that is in court right now. Do you, I have two questions for you. One, do you think that the rule of law is subject to cases of national security? And two, looking at this case for one, where the judicial system and court orders have been flouted from time to time by the current government, the rule of law being disregarded in this, in this, in this matter? Uh, f uh, for us, uh, we must be careful as people and as country. We must be careful because if you are looking at it, uh, first of all, the question you ask yourself, did Sowore call for revolution? Yes. He, he called, called for, for a revolution, revolution. protest. Okay. And did. we do know that the word revolution has yes. different meanings in the dictionary. So are we saying that in this situation, because he called for a revolution, all of a sudden it becomes a case of national security? Definitely when you call for revolution, security must call you because it's their job to know what do you mean? What type of revolution are you calling for? And if they dig further, they have to now take you to court, which they've took him to. Now, the security have to now dig for that to look at, okay, if you are calling for revolution, who and who are joining hands with you and how they are doing. But what, I don't want to go much into that because I don't want to personalize this issue. What I am saying as a country and as people is that we, in 20, uh, through 90s, were calling for protest, democratic process. We, 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 we ran out the military out of, into barrack. We were lucky that by, 20, uh, night, by night, uh, 1999, uh, uh, President Obasanjo Job came in on board and he was able to uh, uh, push them back to barrack. We have been able to achieve that through him. Uh, Yeradua came, we have uh, the, the entrenched uh, rule of law. You have Jonathan that came. Now, uh, you have uh, uh, Buhari that has come now, is for us to now strengthen this democratic process. And in strengthening this democratic process, what I'm saying is that we don't need to start now going to the street. What we need to do as people and as political parties is for us to sit down, look at which area that has been flawed. Why is it being flawed? Then how do we amend this area to conform with our own belief and with our culture and call on National Assembly. And luckily, National Assembly is saying by 20, next year, January, they are going to start amendment, constitutional amendment. Therefore, why can't we take this line? Eh? Going to National Assembly, expressing our, putting up our documents, 
uh, and pushing and even lobby for this amendment to conform with what we want rather than going to street. It is no more time for us to go to street. When we're in the military era, yes, we can start running to street. Now what should concern us as people is that as a Nigeria, where are we as people economically? Where are we? Politically, where are we? Okay. How do we now amend this constitution okay. economically okay. Okay. that will now uh, put us into, into the map of the world map, of economic world of map? map. Okay. This is area I am saying. Okay, Let us you. not personalize it. Okay. Let's go into the national uh, issues. Okay, Mr. Shutu. Uh, a lot of people will say peaceful protest are tenants of democracy. You have a right to peaceful protest. I mean, if you watch what is currently happening in India, that's a democracy. And people are on the streets because there's a certain law that is not sitting down well with them. A lot of people will also look at you and say, uh, how do you really push for true democratic reforms when it's been said over and over again that the National Assembly is a rubber stamp? So a lot of people don't even trust the capacity of the National Assembly in pushing for these true executive reforms that you are talking about. So that's why they go to the streets that the only the streets can listen to them. A case in point is the case of Shoare. Another one is Sambo Dansuki. Why is Sambo Dansuki still being held after all this while? Uh, we believe, I believe that uh, uh, you, you can see that uh, you are just saying it there that the office of the AGF has taken over the case. And I believe they will do justice to the case because the Minister of Justice is somebody that believes in the rule of law. Uh, and I believe that they will do justice to uh, this issue and it will go to court. And subsequently, we will now see that justice will take uh, its precedence. Okay, uh, we're about to go on a, a short break, but let me just ask you, because you're also a chairman of a political party here in Nigeria. The ruling party had only recently claimed that Nigeria is sliding into a one-party state. And uh, I, I wonder if your party and others have not failed Nigerians to provide the constructive opposition that we need for the fledging democracy you're talking about. Um, I, I'll, I'll come back to you to get your response to that question after this break. Please stay with us. Welcome back to The Morning Show here on Arise Eyes News. And we still have with us from our Abuja studios a former presidential candidate, uh, Mr. Mohammed Shitu. Mr. Mohammed, thank you so much for staying with us. So before we went on that break, I asked you that question. Thank you. Should Nigerians not hold political elites such as yourself responsible for where we are? You are also a chairman, national chairman of a political party. A position where the APC, the ruling party in the country, has said we are sliding into a one-party state. Your party and others have failed to provide the effective uh, opposition that is needed in our democracy. What's your thought? Uh, thank you. Uh, I, when I was chairman of Interparty Advisory Council in 2012, uh, we brought about three amendments because as it is today, there's no political parties except those that has won governorship, have governors or got presidency, that has the way that we defund with which to move this democracy because we have turned our democracy to money democracy. And that is why I'm talking of amendment. When our chairman of Interparty Advisory Council 2012, we brought three amendments. One, we said, look, remove uh, state sec, that state electoral uh, commission, state independent electoral commission, remove it, allow the national uh, 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 body to conduct that election. What wisdom we are taking out of there is that, look, if you remove state electoral commission, parties will evolve from their local government. They can win their local government, they can win their award, they can now start their program from their local government. Today, as it is, no political parties that can win in any state where it, uh, uh, they say, let, let's assume if party A 
is a, a, have governorship of that state. Party B cannot win in that state. It's the same party that will be winning in that state. It's the party that has the governor because this result of the local government are being written in government houses and then announced in the night, in the evening. So what we do with the wisdom that comes out of that, that if, you, if it is be free and fair election in the local government area, party will now win their local government, evolve from their local government, and secondly, we said, create proportional representation. If you create proportional representation, it will reduce the issue of winner takes all. What that means is that if there's proportional representation today, if I win 50, uh, 49 percent of total vote and somebody win just 51 uh, percent of total vote, that 49 percent people that vote for me have to go back and wait until another four years. Their ideology will not be known. They cannot sell anything about their ideology. We are saying create proportional representation where if I have 40 percent, even if I have 25 to 30 percent, I can be represented in that government. Then I can now start projecting my ideology. That will build ideological political uh, party. And we are saying create electoral offenses commission so that, you know, people know that if you if you, you go into rigging, or if you go into snatching of ballot, or if you go in, you could be punished. As it is today, electoral umpire that we have cannot prosecute electoral offenses. So if you put these three together, you find that political party will now evolve over time. And you can also say, look, some, if, as it is practiced in the modern world, where parties are in counties, Parties can win in their counties and then support the national. That is how political parties evolve over years. That's why I say, let's build our political system according to our belief and culture. We just don't build political parties, and that's why we, are, we want to take the advantage of this 20, uh, uh, next year, January uh, amendment, to make sure that we put all this amendment through. This will now allow the political space to evolve. And there are a lot of things that we must take out of this. One, you must also make local government in Nigeria economy, uh, financial autonomy, where they don't go cap in hand to beg a governor before they could even put a developmental program in their area. So we, all these are why we are calling for the amendment, that this amendment must come in order to build and revolve and put our political system at the right perspective so that we can be having all these uh, things that is happening. Issue of uh, yeah. either a president, if, okay. my, if I can win in my local government and then I can put developmental program, what concern us with national? National have to come and beg us to get our okay. vote. You, you That's the only way that political party could be effective in Nigeria. You seem very optimistic with this uh, review next year. But I'd like to talk about institutions because we have mentioned some institutions. Uh, it was ba President Barack Obama that said Africa needs strong institutions and not strong men. In your own opinion, as the largest economy on the continent and the most populous black nation, which would you say we are building? Are we building strong institutions or we are building strong men? That is why I'm calling for amendment of the Constitution, because we are building strong men today, and we need to build strong institutions. If we build strong institutions where me and you see governance as service, not we see governance as business, that is what I'm telling Nigerians. And that is why this amendment is very important. And that's why I want Nigerians to wake, to arise, and look at what we can do and put this amendment through in order to put to let us build strong institutions that we are calling for. But at least today, we are building strong people, strong governors, strong local government chairmen. Because one man just sit down, appoint a local government, and that is it. You call it, they put a kangaroo election. So if you build strong electoral system and put in place, I know that I must seek the vote of masses before I get to office. If they don't vote for me, I cannot get to office. Whatever I bring 
if I bring billions of dollars, <coughs> I cannot be voted for if I didn't go through that process. But as it today, I just bring money, share to people, and they, 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 I, I claim victory. And when I come in on board, those money, I want to recoup it. So politics is turning into business. And that is why we are saying, let us quickly, before the democratic <coughs> process collapse, let's try now and put amendment and put a strong institution that will help oh, oh, the country. Okay. Uh, Alagi, a lot of people will say opposition party like yours, uh, what they should be doing is, you know, strong opposition based on, you know, current national issues. A case in point is FIRS. And Colonel Logodio did issue a statement, FIRS, as regards to 40 billion. Some are saying 40 billion, some are saying otherwise uh, for FIRS. Colonel Logodio, the, the spokesperson of the PDP, you know, did issue a statement, a very strong worded statement on Twitter recently, you know, saying that the ruling party, the APC, should come clean on that money. I, I mean, I'm going to quote him here. He said the People's Democratic Party calls on the APC to come clean on revelations in the public space that the 40 billion taxpayers' money allegedly signed for from the Federal Indian Revenue was used to finance 2019 campaigns. Somebody will have thought that your party as opposition will talk about issues like this. Do you have a stance on issues like this? You see, uh, Nigeria is for for uh, is uh, for our to salvage. The issue of talking of uh, either an institution stole money or doesn't stole money. For us, what I believe is that we must be nationalists in our mind. We must also be careful in what we punch outside there, because the world is looking at us. The world is hearing us. I've I've just come out to tell you about my effort in amending in putting up amendment in our constitution. If you have strong institution, nobody will go and steal any money or anywhere. There will be no allegation or no this thing. But if you don't have strong institution, that is why I'm calling, as you say, for building of strong democratic institution so that people who don't need to spend 10 naira before they will go for election. And for me, as oppo opposition is not just for me to come out and condemn. No, don't opposition, we must also fashion we are cultured. We are, we are now Africa. We are Nigerian. We are cultured. We are made to believe that what you do, uh, we must live above. As national chairman of a party, what I do is put my pen and paper together. I write. I have copies. I write to either if it concerns the executive, I write to them. This is what I feel should be done. And I keep those records. And it is those records today that I want to take and take to National Assembly to also call for the amendment of area that I know that is injurious to our democratic process. Right, um, Alaji, uh, uh, Shaita, you want to... Wanna I would like to, you know, real quickly, he has, you have spoken about the strong democratic institutions, and we did have a, one of the spokespersons from ICPC here yesterday who spoke about, obviously, one of their mandates being fighting corruption and looking at transactions. However, there are other parameters that are used to judge corruption, like nepotism and flouting the rule of law. Very quickly, do you think we should have an institution that focuses on the constant ridicule of the rule of law by the current administration? In 10 seconds or less? We have institutions already. How do we strengthen this institution? Should matter to us. It's for me and you, because the country lies on our head. And we must now look at the way with which we make this institution strong. We have the doctrine of And that's a good place to leave it, balances. unfortunately. We Mr. Mohammed Shitu, we have run out of time. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for gracing the show this morning. Much appreciated. And that brings us to the end of the show today. I am Ade Sua Omoruan. I'm Rafael Sidi. And I'm Shaitan Atigari. Thank you for watching from our entire team here in Lagos. Enjoy the rest of your morning and, of course, the rest of your day. Goodbye.